can't pay for your sins. You could try to make it right. You know, one thing you did wrong, you can try to make right. But all the things we've done wrong, we can't make it right. And especially since we've sinned against God, we can't make it right. So no one has enough riches to redeem themselves. No one can pay the price to redeem themselves. But somebody did pay the price. And who was that? Jesus. Jesus redeemed us by his blood, and that gave us forgiveness of sins, and he could do that because he has all riches and grace. Now, last week, we talked about how God said to the children of Israel, he said, in fact, he said to Moses, tell the children of Israel, I am their God, and I will redeem them. So, the children of Israel, how did they, who, why did they have, who had control of the children of Israel? And so they were not free. They could not do what they wanted to do. <laughs> Pharaoh. That's right. Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is the king in what country? Egypt. In Egypt. That's right. So, Pharaoh made the children of Israel work for him. They could not do everything they wanted to do. They had to serve him. They couldn't go and just take vacations or whatever. They had all kinds of work that Pharaoh had given them to do. And they were suffering. In fact, God, Pharaoh tried to have many of the Israelites kill their own children, their babies. Right when they were born, he wanted them to kill their baby boys. And he was trying to make it so there was less and less, fewer and fewer Israelites, but the Israelites, God blessed them. And there was more and more and more Israelites, and Pharaoh did not like that. He tried everything he could. God heard the children of Israel crying out to him, and he saw their suffering, and so he sent Moses to lead his people out of Israel, right? Moses and Aaron, and Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, God, Jehovah God, the God of Israel, says, let my people go. And what did Pharaoh say? Do you remember what Pharaoh said? He said no. Do you remember anything else that he said, Gage? He said no. He said, who's that God? I never heard of a Jehovah God. I never heard of the God of Israel. I know all kinds of other gods, but I don't know that God. You, I'm not going to listen to him. I'm not going to let them go. So, after a while, and at the end of last week, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and asked him again, told him again that God wanted him, wanted Pharaoh, to let the Israelites go. And what did he say? No. So what happened. Do you remember what happened at the end of the lesson last week? What happened? What did Aaron do to what to show that to show Pharaoh that he better listen and do what God wanted him to, wants him to do? Let's have one person. We'll, we'll, we'll take Lucas this time. He made the river blood. That's right. The fish died and but do you remember what happened? Aaron, with God, with the rod of God, passed his rod over the waters, and the waters turned to blood. But what happened? What else happened? Do you remember what else happened? Let's see uh, what Ian remembers that happened. The witch doctors. They found water. They found water and turned it into blood. And so Pharaoh, well, he's probably thinking, well, you could do that magic trick, and my... Which doctors can do their magic trick? Why should I listen to your God, right? And so, the people of Egypt had to suffer with their river being blood for seven days. For seven days. Now, I'm going to try to move along quickly. But I'm going to tell you how many. This was number one. There was ten, what the Bible calls plagues. Ten plagues in Egypt. Ten judgments from God on the people of Israel. There was ten. And some people think, wow, God is so mean. He gave them ten judgments. But what we're going to find out is after 
each one, who had a chance to decide to do what was right? Pharaoh, right? It wasn't like he dumped all ten on them at once. He had one, and Pharaoh could have said, whoa, I better do what God wants me to do, right? But he didn't. And then another one would come. And you would think, pretty soon, Pharaoh was going to say, okay, now I think I've had enough. I think I'm going to do what God wants me to do. But no. No. So, the very first plague, God... With, the hand, with his rod, through the hand of Aaron, turned the river into blood. And seven days later, it was still blood. But after that, it went back to normal. And Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh again and said, The God of Israel says, Let my people go. And if you don't, I'm going to send frogs throughout your land. And the next morning... Frogs came out of the river and went throughout all the land. Now that sounds funny to us, maybe a little bit. Cold, slimy frogs coming out of the river. They were not poisonous. But you know something that, that the Egyptian there was a god that the Egyptians worshipped. Now he wasn't a real god, but you know the sign of the, this god that they worshipped? A frog. So any Egyptian that would try to do something to a frog, he would be doing that to his God. And he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't like kick a frog out of his house or the frog was more important than him. So these frogs that come out of the river, the Bible says they were in the ovens, they were in the beds, they were in their living rooms, they were in the streets. There were frogs everywhere you would turn. There were frogs and they couldn't do anything about it because foolishly, they, they worship frogs. Well, after a while, Pharaoh, I'm going to see. <laughs> Pharaoh said, to Mo, got Moses and Aaron to come and said, Okay, I've had enough frogs. Pray to your God and have them take the frogs away. Well, actually, you know what? Before that, Pharaoh's magicians, or his witch doctors, they were able to say some things, and some frogs came out of the river for them, too. So the devil does have power, doesn't he? He has some power. And so these witch doctors, they did that. But after a while, Pharaoh was like, take the frogs away. And Moses said, well, okay, when? When do you want me to have the frogs not to stop being around? And for some reason, Pharaoh didn't say right now. He said, in the morning. And so Moses prayed to God, and in the morning, no more frogs, except, you know how God did that? He just had all the frogs that were there die. And they couldn't go anywhere anymore. So what did the people have to do? They swept all the frogs into the streets. The Bible says that it stunk. Have you ever smelled a dead frog? You know, smashed on the road saw or something like that? Could you imagine hundreds and hundreds of frog, dead frogs? It stunk. That was awful. Then, so Pharaoh said, okay, I, I, you can worship your God, but you can just, why don't you just worship God right here where you are? <coughs> hmm, will that work? Do you remember, was it last week? What did God tell the people of Israel that he wanted them to do? They were supposed to leave, it, leave Egypt and go three days into the wilderness and worship God there. They were supposed to go three days in the wilderness and worship God there. They were supposed to leave and worship God. So when Pharaoh said, well, you can worship God, just do it right here. Is that what God said to do? No. And, Pharaoh, and Moses said, we can't do that. If we sacrifice to our God right here, your people, the Egyptians, they will they'll kill us because we'll be, we'll be killing the things that they worship. And they'll just raise up like, you know, because they worship cows and they're going to sacrifice cows. And that would be off, that would to somebody who who thinks that a cow is God. You go and kill a kill a cow. You're in big trouble, right? So most said, "Not we can't do that." In fact, God said we're supposed to go out and worship God three days in the wilderness. So Pharaoh said, "Nope, I won't let you go." And so the next day, or sometime soon after that, God told Aaron to strike the dust on the ground with his rod. 
so he hit the dust on the ground with his rod, and the Bible says that dust turned into lice. And all the people of Israel, or not Israel, all the people in Egypt had lice. They had lice in their hair, on their skin. Their animals had lice. There was lice all over the place. And God gave Pharaoh a chance to let the people of Israel go. And Pharaoh said, okay, just take the lice away and I'll let you guys go. And so God took the lice away. But did Pharaoh let him go? No. No. He changed his mind. Things got okay. And he said, well, nah, I don't want them to leave. <coughs> so then... God said, okay. Moses said, tomorrow there's going to be swarms of flies in all the land of the Egyptians, except there's going to be no flies in the area where the Israelites live. God was showing that he had all power. These things were not just accidents that came to everybody. And the next day, swarms of flies. The Bible says swarms. Now you know how one fly can bug you. But could you imagine if there was 15 or 20 flies and they were swarming around you and everybody had their own swarm of flies? That's awful. Yeah. God had the power to control those swarms of flies and no flies in where the Israelites live. Pharaoh, he said, please take the flies away. Take the flies away and I'll let, you, let the people go. So God took the flies away. God was merciful, wasn't he? He could have said, no, you let them go, and then I'll take the flies away. But he took the flies away, and what did Pharaoh do? He didn't let them go. See how many chances Pharaoh got to do what God wanted him to do? Well, but Pharaoh did it. He changed his mind. He went back to what he really wanted to do, and that was keep the people of Israel in bondage. So then, God said... Tomorrow, all your beasts, all your animals, <laughs> like the ones, I don't know which ones, but a whole bunch of your animals are going to get a disease, and they're going to die. And, but none of the children of Israel's animals will die. The Bible says the next morning, all the beasts in Egypt, they're healing over, it doesn't say this, but they, they, they're dying. They had this terrible disease and I don't know if they were moaning and groaning and lots of pain and dying. Pharaoh said to, said to one of his servants, he says, go over to where the Israelites are and see what's happening to their, their, their animals. And they went over there and what do you think they were doing? They are just munching on grass. They were doing everything normal. God had protected his people again and he was judging the people of Egypt. Well, along the way, remember how the, the magicians, the witch doctors, they were kind of doing the same thing? Well, pretty soon, actually back with the lice, the, the magicians, they tried, but they couldn't bring the lice out of the dust. And they said to Pharaoh, uh, this God is more powerful than all of our gods. So Pharaoh knew from even his own uh, priests and witch doctors that the God that he was up against was greater than his gods, but would he let his, the people go? Nope. Soon after that, boils came over all the people in Egypt. Have you ever had a boil? Just a little, like, something I had not that long ago, I had just a little thing in my thumb, a little piece of my skin kind of got cut and then it got stuck in there and it started to get pus in there and it was just a tiny bit painful. But if you had those all over, very painful. The Bible says even the priests, the magicians, the witch doctors, they had boils and they couldn't even come to Pharaoh. They couldn't even be in Pharaoh's court and give him advice or anything like that. Pharaoh said to um, Moses and Aaron, okay, I'll let you go, but listen. Um, let me get this straight. Anyway, 
I'll let you go, but don't, um, but just the men go. Just the men go. The ladies and the, and the children, they should stay in the land. He tried to bargain with them. But what did God say to Moses and Aaron? <coughs> Who was supposed to go? Everybody was supposed to go. That's right. So Moses said, no, can't do that. And so Pharaoh said, no, you can't go then. And, God, and Moses said, listen, tomorrow there will be the greatest storm that you've ever seen come to your land. There's going to be thunder crashing. And there's going to be lightning crashing. And the lightning, when it strikes the ground, is going to start fire. And there's going to be fire running along on the ground. In fact, in the hail that comes down through the thunder and lightning is going to be so strong that it will kill. It will be like knock people in the head and it will kill them. It's so strong. In fact, Moses told him ahead of time, he said, tell all of your people that if they want their animals that they still have to be protected and their servants and themselves to live, they better be inside so they're not outside during the storm. And I bet probably some people went inside, but a bunch of people didn't. A bunch of people didn't listen to, to Moses. They didn't listen to the warning. And so what happened? The next day, the next day there was a great storm. Lightning and thunder and hail came down. And the, the lightning caused fire to run along across the ground. And all the crops that were in the field, you know how we go along in the summertime, there's like corn standing. All the crops got smashed down by the hail. Any animals and servants that were out in the fields, they got struck by those hailstones, like getting hit by a bullet by those hailstones, and they died. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, please, make the hail and the fire go away. If you do that, I'll let you go. And Moses said, I don't, you kind of said that a bunch, but when I get outside of town, I will pray to God, and he will make it stop. And you better remember what you promised. And so Moses and Aaron, they got out of town, and they prayed, and God made the hail and the fire and the lightning all stop. And you think Pharaoh told the people, okay, you can go now? No. Things got better, and so he decided, no, I don't want you to go. You can't go. Well, very soon after that, God <laughs> told Pharaoh that the next day, there would be swarms of locusts. And the Bible says, you know what a locust is? Like a grasshopper type thing? How they can, they can jump around? Well, locusts can fly. And the Bible says there was a swarm of that, that, that day and the next, and that night, there was a wind that came out of the east, and it blew and blew and blew, and in the morning, there was a, there was a swarm of locusts so large that it made the sky black. There were so many locusts. And the locusts came down on the, on the land. And what locusts do is they eat anything that's green. So, remember all the plants got smashed down by the hail and burned up? Well, there were still some little tiny plants in the ground that hadn't come out. Well, the locusts <laughs> came across and they ate all the crops that were left. So, the, peop the people in the land of Egypt, with Pharaoh as their leader, do they have any food coming anymore? Yeah. No, because it just got destroyed in the judgments of God. Their animals, do they have very many animals left? No, they got sick. They were killed by the, by the um, hail. And there's no food for them to eat even if they could go out in the field. God is judging them because they are, not, because they are disobeying God. So there's a swarm of locusts. And, Moses, and Pharaoh called to Moses and Aaron and said, please, take the locusts away. And so Moses prayed to God, and a west wind came and blew, and blew all the locusts into the great Red Sea that's next to Egypt. But did, Moses, did, did Pharaoh let the people go? No. Nope. Nope. He came with a deal. He said, okay, so um, you, you go... And your, you can take your children and your, and your wives, but leave your animals back here. Leave your animals back here. Would that work? How are you going to sacrifice anything to God if you don't have any animals? Right? 
And Moses said, that won't work. God wants all of us, not a hoof, he said. Not a paw of an animal will be left behind. We're all going three days into the wilderness to worship God. And Pharaoh said, nope, can't go. Suddenly, the land was dark. I can't make it as dark in here as it was. It was so dark, people were afraid to even move. It was just a thick, thick darkness. And it almost like swallowed up people. They felt very probably claustrophobic. They couldn't move anywhere. It was so dark. A few people would go here and there and venture around, but it paralyzed the country of Egypt for three days. In that, toward the end of that time, Moses... Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and gave them one last chance to do some, do what God wanted some way different than the way God wanted. And Moses said, no, we can't do that. We have to do what God said. And Pharaoh got angry with them, finally. He's probably been angry with them for a while. But he said, you're going to leave here, and I don't ever want to see your face again. If I see your face again, you're a dead man. And Moses and Aaron left, and went back to the children of Israel. And while he was there, God came to Moses and Aaron and said, I have one more message for you to give to Pharaoh. One last message. Now, let's go back here. And let's count. Where's my... Okay. One, blood. Where are we? Two, frogs. Three, lights. Four, Lies. Five, disease in the animals. Six, boils. Am I going right? Seven, hail, fire. Eight, swarms of locusts. Nine, darkness. And God said, I want you to bring one last message to Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh had, how many times did he have? How many chances did he have to obey God? More than nine, because he was told a couple times before the plagues even started, right? More. Each time he could have said, okay, let the people go. But he wouldn't. So God said, tell Pharaoh that if he will not let my people go, I am going to take the firstborn of everything in Egypt. The firstborn son. Is there anybody here that's the firstborn child of your parents? I am. Yeah. Yeah. The firstborn of your animals. Even the animals in the in the in the in the barn. The firstborn of any animal is going to die because you have not done what I want you to do. So. We're going to talk about something else that God had for them, but, that'll be next week, but, you know what happened there? The night came, and all of a sudden, there was a cry throughout the land of Egypt. I don't know, maybe a, a, a teenage boy who was the firstborn, in the middle of the night, starts feeling awful starts crying out, and pretty soon he's dead. And his parents run into his room, and they find he's dead. Pharaoh, in his house, he was not the firstborn, but he had a firstborn. Pretty soon he hears some noise, and he goes into the room where his firstborn is sleeping, and he's dead the firstborn of all the children of Egypt and all the animals in Egypt, all the people who were the firstborn in their families died in the judgment of God. And then Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, go, get out of our land before you kill all the rest of us. Now, there's a few things we could learn from that. And there's probably more than this, but let's just start with this. God gave Pharaoh many, many chances to repent and do what he was supposed to. And Pharaoh did not, did he? The 
Another thing we should know is that God judges sin. He judges sin. A lot of people think that we can just live by whatever we want, and God doesn't care what we do. But God does care what we do. And God judges sin. And the Bible tells us that coming in the future, remember several months back we were talking through Revelation? And in Revelation, the Bible tells us of lots and lots of things, many of them similar to what we're talking about right now. God is going to judge the whole earth, not just Egypt. He's going to judge the whole earth and redeem the earth. Satan has the earth. Satan has the people in the earth. God is going to judge the earth and take the earth back to himself. So we want to make sure that we are obedient. If we know that we ought to do something, we shouldn't sit and say, ah, I don't want to do it. Maybe I could do it this way instead. If And if we know people who don't know about Jesus, everybody, no, everybody who doesn't turn to Jesus and hasn't believed on Jesus, they're, if they're alive when those judgments come to the earth, they're going to be in those awful judgments. So we want to tell people that God is going to judge the earth and that to escape the judgment of God, we have to obey Him. And obeying God means believing on Jesus, turning from our sin, believing on Him, receiving the, the forgiveness of sins that He gives because He shed His blood, and through that forgiveness of sins, we can then have fellowship with God and we can have eternal life. So, two things. God judges sin, and God gives opportunities to turn from sin. And we should remember both of those things.